Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of The Hand of the Day brought to you from the Park Hyatt in Siem Reap, Cambodia. This place is beautiful. It's been on my bucket list for a long time and super excited to finally made it out. Hand of the Day. So this hand comes from an episode of High Stakes Poker. We got Doyle Brunson here, the legend, the godfather involved in this one. This hand kicks off with Gila Liberté limping under the gun for 1,200 on 600, 1,200 blinds. Jamie Gold limps behind him with jack seven off and folded around to Doyle who makes it 11,200. So a sizable raise here from Doyle with ace 10 of diamonds. Now we got Sammy Farha in the small blind who calls with king jack offsuit. David Benamine calls in the big blind with king five suited. And then Guy Le Liberté and Jamie Bold both call and we go five ways to the flop. So right off the bat, we have Gila Liberté limping under the gun here with ace five of hearts, which is a fine play in a full ring cash game, limping, raising, folding these hands. It really could go either way. And as long as you have a good strategy of how you're going to play post-flop and as well as a good pre-flop strategy that's balanced, I think limping here is fine. Jamie Gold with jack seven off, way too loose to be limping here, but of course you guys already know that. Doyle isolating with ace 10 of diamonds is totally reasonable. He's in position facing you know, weak ranges, loose limpers, and he has a hand that plays pretty well. I also like him going 11,200 here. It's a big raise size, and he really charges people for the draws, uh, for them to draw pre-flop. Now they're very deep, something like 350,000, so whenever they have 300 big blinds here, it's definitely good to raise bigger and charge people a lot pre-flop. Sammy Farhan, the small blind, while he does have a hand that's decent, this is not a good hand to play from this position. He's in the worst possible position, and it's very likely that this hand is gonna have a domino effect where if he calls, he's gonna get at least two calls behind him, and he's gonna be playing this hand out of position four ways against Doyle, specifically who has a, a pretty tight range in a spot like this, and King Jack Off just does not play well at all. So I would like to see a fold here from Farha. He could opt to three bet this hand. Three betting is definitely better than calling, I think, but I think folding is better than three betting. So folding would be my first choice uh, for Farha here. He does decide to call. Benamine now in the big line. His call is better than Farha's because at least his hand is suited and he's in position against Sammy. Uh, and he doesn't really, you know, less likely someone re-raises behind him. But at the same time, I still think this hand's just a little bit too loose. He is still out of position against likely to be three opponents. His hand doesn't play that well. Again, he could opt to three bet here, but I think folding is just probably the best play. Now over to um, Guy Le Liberté, who has, a, who has a clear call. He could opt to re-raise here as well. He's definitely not going to be folding this hand, which I guess is the point. After he limps in, he has three people in the pot already. Jamie Gold behind him, who's likely to call and close the action. This hand is definitely playable, given, given the odds he's getting. So I would like to see a call here. It's fine. Some of the time, I wouldn't even mind him going for a limp re-raise, especially because you're going to get Jamie Gold out of the way. You have loose action from the small blind and the big blind, and the only person you're really worried about is Doyle, who, while he does have a strong range for raising, he's going to be folding some of those hands if uh, Guy decides to limp re-raise here. So I wouldn't mind Guy making it 50,000. I'm okay with that as well. I'm also fine with a call. Jamie Gold. Should have folded pre-flop, he still should fold pre-flop, but he calls, and we go five ways to the flop. Flop comes ace-jack-2 rainbow. It gets checked around to Doyle, who bets 40,000 into 57. Now, right away here, I'm thinking that Doyle is very likely to have a strong hand, something like what he has, or even something better. Ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, set of aces, set of jacks. Those are all very viable hands that Doyle could have. It's also very unlikely, I think, that he has complete air here just because he raised preflop number one, but he also bet into four players, and it's very likely that someone's going to continue on this board. So I think the worst hand he has here is maybe something like king-10, king-queen, or queen-10 suited, if he even raises those preflop to begin with. Some of those hands are going to also have backdoor flush draws and gut shots, but I think most of his range is going to be strong aces here, which is like the hand that he does have. Farha has a clear fold, I think. Benamine obviously with nothing. Over to Guy Le Liberté, who, without the backdoor flush draw, even though he does have a backdoor straight draw, with just top pair here, out of position against Doyle, I think I would let this one go. Maybe you could opt to call here with like a backdoor flush draw, but ace five just doesn't really play that well. It's most likely that he's behind in this spot, because I just don't think Doyle has a loose flop betting range. I think most of the time Doyle would check the flop here if he missed completely in a five-way pot. So I probably would let this one go. I guess you could call with a backdoor flush draw, 
I'm still not loving it either way, especially because just mainly against my opponent. If Doyle was a different player, he'd been playing differently, he'd been raising more often or c-betting lighter, you could opt to call here more happily. But this spot, not loving it too much. Guy opts to call, Jamie Gold has a clear fold, we go heads up to the turn. Turn comes a four of diamonds, bringing a backdoor flush draw, great card for Doyle, and Guy also picks up a little bit more equity with a gut shot straight draw. Guy now checks, and Doyle bets 110,000, a massive bet. Um, very big bet size on the turn here, close to the size of the pot. So Doyle's range for betting here is also pretty strong. I think that having bet the flop into five people, when he does get called by Guy, it's very likely that Guy has an ace. In fact, ace five is pretty much the worst possible hand that I think Guy can viably check call the flop with. So I think Doyle's not gonna be bluffing this turn that often just because it looks like his opponent has a pretty strong hand for calling given the action pre-flop and post-flop. So I don't think Doyle's gonna be bluffing that often. I don't think he's even bluffing that often on the flop. But, so when he bets this turn here, yes, he does pick up diamonds, but it's almost like his, he's over-representing his hand. I mean, it looks like he has a super strong made hand pre-flop and his hand almost looks like ace-king. So when he bets here with ace-10, Sure, Ace-10 has some things going for it that Ace-King doesn't because, you know, he could, he could turn, river a backdoor flush. Um, so Ace-10 ace of diamonds specifically has more equity against hands like two pair or sets. It's still not going to get value from a worse one pair hand. So for that reason, I would like it to check. It's a spot where if Doyle is ahead of something like Ace-5, he's way ahead. And if he's behind something like a set, well, then it's a nice spot to check and realize his equity and, and avoid getting check raised. So this is a spot where I don't expect Doyle to ever get check called by a worse hand. I expect his opponent to either check raise with a better hand or check fold if he has a worse hand. Maybe check call if he has a better hand with something like ace queen or maybe like a weak two pair or something like that. So I would like to see a check here from Doyle. He bets 110,000 over to Guy who cannot call this turn. I mean, at this point, ace five was already a marginal call on the flop. On the turn, it's definitely a fold. But what I don't mind about Guy's play is he does decide to raise here. I mean, it is pretty aggressive to do that against Doyle's bet size specifically. I think if Doyle bet like 60 or 70,000, it would be a little bit more likely that Doyle might fold. He's less pot committed. And I feel like there's more room for Guy's raise to effectively work. When Doyle bets 110, I think it's a little bit harder to get this play to work because Guy basically has to go all in. Doyle only has 340 behind. He has to basically go all in and hope that Doyle folds to one bet. Even if Doyle has something like ace-king, he might let it go, but against Guy, he might not. So I don't really love this raise with against Doyle with Guy's specific hand. If Guy had something like he turned a flush draw with ace-five of diamonds, sure, that's a hand that's viable to bluff with because he has so much more equity, but those hands are also just pretty good to call with as well. You're really only hoping that your Doyle, your opponent, folds something like ace-king or ace-queen, so it's kind of a thin raise to begin with. Guy decides to make it 310,000. Doyle goes all in for 30,000 more. Guy's forced to call, and they get it all in in this spot, and Doyle wins a massive, massive pot here. So I think it's an interesting spot. I don't hate Guy's bluff. I like the idea that he was thinking, clearly trying to get his opponent to fold the top pair, but I just think this wasn't the best particular spot to do it. I just think Doyle's too committed with his bet size on the turn. I would love to hear what you guys think though. Leave me your thoughts in a comment below. Uh, what would you have done if you were Doyle? Would you bet this turn or would you just check it behind, take a free card? How would you play the hand if you're Geek? Do you think his bluff is crazy or does it make some sense? And could he ever get Doyle to fold something like Ace King? I wish Doyle had Ace King here. I would love to see what he would have done. Leave me your thoughts in a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time from Sam Reap for the end of the day. Thanks for watching. Cheers.